This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. All of our podcasts are available from our website, www.sas.ac.uk. Uh, thanks a lot for this invitation, Jill, and I, I don't know if I'm in the right place in the sense that uh, the task I've been given is really not easy. I've been asked to engage a response and dialogue with these papers from my culture and uh, disciplinary perspective. But uh, my discipli disciplinary perspective uh, happened to be demography that is quite far from this ethnographic and social anthropological uh, view on uh, migration and motherhood. Uh, I, uh, demography are very simple uh, persons, uh, they just count <laughs> migrants and uh, a mother is just supposed to be the woman who delivered the baby. So we count children and we count also <laughs> migrations as movement uh, that add uh, individuals to a population or decrease a po individual from a population and this is of, of course a fundamental uh, component of the numerical and um, movements and change of composition of a population. So we are talking more of fertility than motherhood, we are more talking about migrations as events that migrants as agents. Uh, once at that, uh, I just wanted briefly, I mean I just prepared some handouts, just, uh, it was also a PowerPoint presentation but it's the same, just to understand that of course at micro level, at aggregate level we talk about numbers and figures in aggregate way and of course the, 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 the size eh, of this uh, uh, phenomenon of migration is really incredible if we think that uh, one of our 33 people in the world they live in a place that is different uh, than their own countries. But I want more to focus uh, on mm, some terms and terminology because of course we need to distinguish between migration and migrants. Migration is an event so it can be repeated during the life course of a person and in the, in the papers I've read that there are these people who first migrate in a place like the Filipinos then in another place and then repeat it and so this can be very important and also as demographer we don't uh, are afraid to call immigrants and emigrants because we really need to distinguish the perspective of sending country and receiving country and sometimes when we talk about migrants we lose a little bit these important characteristics. Then another important distinction for instance is between flows and stocks so you can see how many people live abroad or live as foreigners as immigrants in one place but it's also important to see how many they arrive, how many they move every year, that it can be a completely different story. And of course also when we talk about figures we can talk about estimated figures because we all know how much is difficult to have good data about this and different is what we observe from what we estimate. Eh? Another important uh, uh, subject is, for instance, the difference between being foreigner or being just a migrant. And all these things uh, actually at the end they are going to affect also the life of people because um, to be citizen or not in a country I, I, I employ a, a certain right or a certain way of living in a country. So for instance uh, also in the European Union we have incredibly different uh, uh, legal status for children who are born or not in one place, if they become citizens or not, and this affects also the way mothers and motherhood I is lived. So then from macro data we can pass through individual data from survey and we can aggregate what are they are the individual bibliography biography to a sort of average biography to see uh, who are the average migrants and uh, when we do that of course it's important the country of origin, how you migrate, so how you arrive in the place, 
when, why, the motivations, but also the age of the migrants, the, the, the sex, the family status in the sending countries and what you find when you arrive, the ethnicity, language, religion, education, and uh, then on the other hand, the, at the country of arrival, I talk about uh, the legislation, about permit to stay, citizenship, who is considered an immigrant? Again, here we have a completely different uh, uh, concept uh, across countries. Uh, sometimes you, you count the length of the stay. You need to stay as resident at least 12 months or less to be considered like that. And then the right of social participation, for instance, of residents. And then the status in the country of residence, so the work status, economic status, legal status, the network of people you have and how long you have been there. When we talk about uh, migration of women, she has already said in the first paper that uh, the most significant change in migration part in the last half century has been the fact that m women are migrating more than ever before. That we are about 49%, but there are some country of origin that, like Filippini, that arrive uh, at 78% of women migrants. And when we talk about uh, women and migration, I would like to point out some words that they describe the difficulties of this condition and that at the end, and uh, without doubt, affect also the experience of motherhood, like uh, low status, low wage production, uh, working gender segregating and irregular sectors, risk, much risk of exploitation, violence and abuse compared to male migrants, vulnerability to human trafficking, se sexual exploitation, sexual violence. We are not talking about that, but this is the environment. So uh, before passing to some comments to the paper, I would like you to focus on this uh, graph I uh, put here. Uh, maybe you cannot see it very well, but this is just uh, some fertility curves. So on one axis you have the age, reproductive age, uh, between 15 to 49 years, and on the y-axis you have simply the rate, so how many children you have at which age. And the, 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 the darker line is a normal curves of fertility. Eh? You have less children uh, when you are young and then uh, more children uh, between 25 and 30, and then less children afterwards. What are the other colors? Then here you cannot see the colors, but the, the different grays you can see. So this is the path, the, the, the shape of fertility of immigrants women. And the dots you can see uh, is the moment where they immigrate. So the, the migration event, uh, and their fertility, they are not two separate uh, processes. They are incredibly linked because those who tend to migrate very late when they are older, usually they postpone their fertility. Sometimes they are far distant from their partner, so they are waiting. They have less children in their own countries before moving. And then suddenly when they arrive, and they are reconjunct with their partner, they have children. Eh? So we have these uh, strange curves, but, and also when they are very young and they reach their partner, so they migrate and they form a union, they tend to have uh, children immediately. So uh, this, you can see, has migration and fertility are incredibly linked. And then afterwards, the migration, you tend to have uh, a different condition and also Sometimes when we say that fertility is very high among immigrant women, we tend to consider just the first period and we don't consider that then these curves goes, go, go down because many times there are also difficulties in having more children in the place where you arrive. Eh? So this is... Uh, just to say something, and uh, just today there is a commission of UN uh, called uh, New Trends in Migration, so of course there are lots of attention about figures on that. About the first paper about Filipino distant mothers, uh, uh, this is a complete and fascinating paper already um, 
who that already won prizes and they have lots of uh, stimulus for demographers. Uh, for instance, uh, first of all, the, it is hidden motivation for migration, so not only what is declared on the data, but for instance, this lack of possibility of divorce that can be not a declared reason but a motivation to migrate. The importance of family and household composition left behind that of course permit this migration is also cause this migration. The, the, the push and pull factors of uh, the sending and receiving countries in this sort of, uh, the, the, the demographer would call it the uh, hydraulic explanation of migration in a sense uh, you have this, this, this disequilibrium of population, of unemployment on one side, and on receiving countries all this need of services and demand of domestic and care works for the aging process and for the difficulties of reconciliation of uh, developed countries between motherhood and uh, um, work. Uh, then there is the gender keys and gender roles she didn't uh, talk about in the presentation, but uh, there is in the paper all these ideas that remittances and immigration itself is the way of fulfills gender roles, but also go beyond gender roles to get it's sort of a family empowerment on the uh, migration. Uh, then another subject stimulating is who migrates. Uh, my migrant population is a higher selected uh, population by age. First of all, you don't migrate when you are old. You migrate when uh, you have the strength and the capacity to work and uh, to go away. It's different by education. It's uh, completely selected by health condition. Y usually only healthy people migrate. If you are sick, you don't have the possibility to move. And uh, she says in the paper that only those who have the socioeconomic capital uh, then they are able to emigrate. If you are below a certain threshold and the conditions are so uh, poor, you cannot even conceive the idea and the possibility to migrate. And uh, so on the other um, and also the consequences of the population of the sending countries, she quotes some figures, 9 million of young children left behind, and how these uh, involve 10% of the population of working abroad, it gives you the idea on what she's talking about is uh, relevant also, and it, it's really uh, important for that population, it's not something that is marginal. Uh, so in a sense, uh, I would say that these transactional models, these technologies are the ultimate way to address the issue of reconciliation between work and motherhood. That, uh, and uh, of course they also have, as she said, the consequences on fertility of the sending countries because Nelia said that she would have much more children if she would have stayed in Filipino. Uh, so in a sense, this migration and distant motherhood is also a drive for decreasing fertility in their own countries. So passing to Cape Verdean uh, young female migrant to Portugal, uh, here I think uh, there are lots of curiosity because it's less uh, um, established background uh, on, 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 on this uh, uh, early motherhood of these women. Of course, the push factors uh, from these women are very clear. Uh, young people of less than 25 years old are more than 50% of the population of the ascending country. That is an incredible. It means that it's a very young population where the, the youth unemployment is incredibly high and of course is a drive to migrate. But uh, there are lots of curiosity for me, for instance, how many are they? How relevant is this um, um, phenomenon of students uh, who are students, but first of all they are uh, immigrants? Uh, what's the rate of these early adolescent pregnancies? You say many, but I don't understand uh, what, what many, how, how many they are. And what's the role also of, of the abortion 
by age and citizenship, by age and foreign status for these women, because for instance, we know in all Europe uh, abortion rates are going down, but especially for native women. So if you look at the simply the figures of abortion, we, we don't see anything about the trends. We tend to say that abortion uh, in all the European countries is a quite stable phenomenon. Then if we divide it by citizenship, we find a completely different story because for uh, native women there is really an incredible drop. Whereas who now is uh, having these terrible things in a sense because from individual point of view, apart from the ethical uh, 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 side of the question, it, it's, a, it's a bad experience. It's much more, more the immigrant women who have experimented that, and sometimes even in a, re in a repeated way. So more than once in their life in a short period. So this is very important also from a social point of view to understand how also social services they, they have to change completely the target on what they think. And then she talked also about uh, fertility as a, a means to social le legitimacy for these uh, young women. Like if these contributions uh, make to a, the decrease in Portuguese fertility gave, give them, uh, gives them a sort of uh, legitimate status as uh, immigrants. And of course, also in this, I, I would like so much to understand how much this is true. I mean, what is the, the relevance of this phenomenon? Uh, the last paper, uh, one minute. Yeah. The last paper for me is the more most difficult in the sense that it's really, uh, apart from the sect in German to German migration, but it's also because it's, uh, the perspective is uh, on writers and novels, so it's really distant. Uh, here I can find uh, the the nice uh, the, the, the the subject of lonely mothers. Huh? And I wonder how this interact uh, with migration. It, it, because you talk about that in the sense, the condition of being a lolly mother and a migrant or in exile, but I wonder if uh, being a migrant is also determinant to be a lonely mother, much more than, be, than before the event uh, in itself of migrate. Then you talk uh, about children and their faster adaptation to the, adaptation to the new circumstances. Uh, and of course, this creates a distance between mothers and children. Uh, and about that, we know how much uh, the, the, the situation of arrival countries can make the difference. So if they are inclusive uh, uh, education system, uh, that they are able to, uh, uh, in a sense, um, put down uh, uh, social differences, this can be completely different from system where the importance of the family of origin is a sort of determinant also of the education outcome. So in conclusion, I, do don't, know, I don't know really whether what I've said make any sense of, for you. <laughs> or, um, or if I can add some ideas to this workshop, uh, but on my part, I'm really sure that listening to you and on the contrary is a valuable exercise for me and a way to remind me that people are not numbers mm -hmm. and that behind numbers there are so many stories uh, of migrants and especially of uh, mothers and motherhood. Thank you.